Hello. So I've seen a lot of people asking questions about like MEVR lately. Like they're looking for guides on how to get stuff set up. And I made one years ago. Most of the stuff still applies, but um, I feel like it's time to make an updated one because it's 2023. You know, I think the video, I feel like the video is like four or five years old. I don't really know. I know it's probably the only video I really have on my channel that I put any time into. But um, anyway, so interested what you would do is you would go to you can see up here mevr.net you go to this site um this is it this is where you get the thing from there's no other place to go to really you just go here uh so what you're going to do is you're going to click on the beta thing that's right up here that's going to take you to this page you want to make sure that like when you have the time you want to read these things again i can't tell you where to get roms from don't ask in the community. I do believe that is a way to get banned really quick. Um, it doesn't require any donations or anything like that. It's just, you know, banned by the developer who seems like he's pretty passionate about the stuff. Um, right here. So how do you participate in the beta? How do you download it? You can join our Discord here. So if you've got Discord, which you should go to Discord's site, I think it's, it's probably honestly just discord.gg or discord.com. Who knows? I put in Google. Once you get that set up, you would go here, click on this. This would take you to your Discord, which is right here. This brings you to the welcome section. Um, this right here, if this video doesn't help you, I mean, this is what you should be doing on the first place anyway, is um, this is gonna tell you like a basic overview of what you should be doing, everything installed. So download and install VR, how to play your games, how to customize things, how to fix anything not working. I'm not gonna go into super detail I want this to be pretty quick. Um, again, server rules, simple. It's super simple, just be good and don't ask for ROMs and don't, just don't be rude. So once you get that, you I think you can go to the FAQ section, you got the announcements here, which usually lets you know like, hey, these are some changes or these are things that are about to come out. Um, you got the download section here. Most people usually end up in here and they're like, hey, how do I, how do I make this thing work? Um, what you do is just go over to the download section right here. It puts you at the bottom of the, the uh, thread. So all you would have to do is scroll up to whatever the most recent post is. It's going to tell you everything that you need to know right here. So this right here is saying basically these are rules for updating or if you're doing a fresh installation. So what you would do is you would go click on this link right here. Which I'm already done. That would download this file back over here, MEVR 1.0.11. The version doesn't really matter. Like I said, as far as I know, like the installation stuff has worked pretty much the same the entire time. So what we're gonna do is we, I got 7-zip to unpack this file. It's a .7z file. And I'm going to make a folder on the desktop. I'm gonna do the drag and drop method for moving stuff around. Using Windows 11, so if this looks different to you, that's probably why. Um, just call the folder MUVR. Go into highlight this stuff and then just drag it over here. Just let this extract. That's done. Folder's all set up. Cool. Um, as I mentioned before, I can't tell you where to get ROMs from. I have ROMs in this folder here, just to, for the tutorial. But um, you can Google it. I would say check Google, Reddit, whatever. Like they're out there. You can you can figure it out. I'm pretty sure there's other channels that cover this stuff too. So. Yeah, anyway, so this is what you get when you get the file extracted. You're going to have all these folders in here, or all these files and folders in here. Um, you got MEVR, which is most people, they see the videos and they're like, man, I'm going to go ahead and play some VR games. I can't wait. You get all excited, and then they open it up. MEVR opens the main thing. I'm going to hit Force Desktop because I've got VR stuff. I don't want it to launch any of that stuff. So we're going here. This is going to open up MEVR, and then people are like, all right, cool, man, I'm in this virtual bedroom. You want to look around in here, as you can see the mouse isn't moving, you hold down the right mouse button, and you can look wherever you want to. You use the uh, WASD to move, similar to a first person shooter. You've got Q to go down, E goes up. Uh, let's see. If you want to interact with certain things in the room, you can press spacebar. 
to this clock here if you want to change the time. But it's daylight, I can cut this light off if I want to. Cool TVs here, if you want to turn those on and off, you would press C. But again, as I mentioned, you don't have any games, so there's not really much to do here other than like just be in a cool bedroom. It's a cool bedroom, man, but you know, I'm pretty sure you're probably looking for more stuff to do, so. Let's see, got to see. Always capitalism. Drop that, I pressed X to pick that up. All right, so um, what you usually do if everything was set up right is you hit tab. This opens up this menu here. This is how you interact with everything that you can spawn or whatever. This would include consoles, which is blank. Settings are in here too. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and close this. There's nothing in here. So we're back at the desktop. Um, as I mentioned before, I've got ROMs. So what you would do is you're going to go to here. There's a file in here. It's just a file. It doesn't even have an extension. This is telling you what you need to do. Copy your games here, one folder for each system. Don't make a folder. Don't go in games and put in your Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo and whatever else. Like you need to separate these things. So I'm going to start with the Nintendo. So we'll start with NES. You can call it whatever you want to. I just try to keep things simple for myself. So we're going to go in here. This is where I have my ROMs at already. I downloaded and go and open Contra. Go into this folder and then just drag this file over to here. I'll extract it. We'll go back and get, oops, more. Let's go with Turtles 2. Okay, so that's done. I can close this folder here. So from there, again, another thing that people usually do is they're ready to like, all right, let's go play some games. You don't do that. What you need to do is you can go to here. And this is going to tell you everything you need to do. So you'd run the game scanner. It's going to give you this error message right here. Could not find the RetroArch installation. So you click this link right here. It's an open installation guide. You need to use a very specific version. Very specific version. Click the download section. You need to use this version here. My advice, just do what they tell you. This is going to help you with, um, if you ever want to do net play and stuff like this, everybody's the same version. Um, the, as far as I know, MEVR is probably like built to run on this thing too. So what you do from there is once you have this downloaded, go in here. And I'm going to go back to that page real quick, just so you can see the key thing note. When extracting RetroArch, make sure not to create another folder inside the target. So what you want it to look like is you want it to look like this. You don't want it to look like this. Now, as you can see, down here, MEVR, there's already a RetroArch folder. So when you go in here, these files that you see here, this is all you need. So I scroll down to the bottom, highlighted everything. I'm going to drag and drop this over to here. There we go. So RetroArch is the thing that you need to actually play the games in MEVR. You also need your own ROMs too. They supply you with an installation for RetroArch, so you don't have to worry about that at least. So now that that's set up, as I mentioned, if you notice the person was indicating that it needs to look like this, you got, I've got MEVR, RetroArch, and then RetroArch.exe is in this folder. So from here, I'm going to back up, go to the game scanner again, run this one more time. There we go. RetroArch patch for MEVR applied successfully. If you're running this just to update your MEVR version, there's no need to rescan your games at this time. If this is your first run, keep going. Either way, please click update core data to update needed data for new cores added in this version. So we're going to click this first right here. I think what this is doing is it's kind of building up the database. It's letting you know, like, oh, these are the cores that are available in this version. So since this is done, I don't have any games. I'm going to go in here, add the folder. This is in MEVR games, and then I've got the Nintendo folder here. So we're going to select this main folder. That's it. Um, it's letting, it tries to auto complete what kind of files you have in there. So this is NES, which is accurate. And then you got the choice of the different cores, which are kind of like mini emulators. I just use it, usually keep it at the top one. 
So we can go ahead and hit save changes. You notice this arrow here, this means this needs to be downloaded. So we're going to download missing cores. That's good. And then I still don't have games, so we're going to scan games for MUVR. Hitting that, got my two games scanned. And from there, we can go ahead and close this. Go back up. We're going to go in here. I usually do this in VR, so uh, if I have any issues with the controls, pardon me. Sorry. I'm, yeah, I haven't used the desktop version in quite a while. Like once I got VR, I, yeah, it was, this was weird. Uh, so as you can see, I've got the Nintendo here because I've got that console. Uh, this model was added right around Christmas, which is pretty cool to me. It actually, you know, opens and closes. Um, one of the things about MEVR, I'm sure you've seen in the videos, is that I've got these old TVs in here. TVs and monitors and stuff. Um, buttons on the side don't really matter. I think if, uh, whatever, we'll do that in a second. Actually, I think I can hit C. So if you're looking at the TV, I'm going to press C on this TV. As you can see, the TV is highlighted. I can still move my mouse around. I can move around the room. You can press the up and down keys on the, um, you know, the whatever, the arrow keys on your keyboard. Adjust the volume. Cut this one back off. It works on all the TVs. You press C to turn the TV on and off. Cool. I'm going to cut that off. So now, so I've got this model in here. I'm pressing X to pick this up. We'll put this up here. U and E again, go up and down. We're going to hit tab to open this menu here. I'm left clicking on the NES. The console's already in the in here. And we're going to, let's grab, let's go with Contra. So I'm going to hitting X to grab this, pressing tab to close that menu there. Drop this here. Let's grab Turtles also. We'll press X here, drop that. Do that. There we go. All right, so we're going to grab the... Okay, one of the things about MEVR is it's designed to, it's not just an emulator, but it also kind of emulates this experience of being in this kind of room. So what I'm going to do is press F, that highlights the console, just tap it. And as you can see, it's got this pink wire running over here. You're gonna, I'm going to connect this to this TV here, pressing F again. You got this huge wire coming out the side, going to the TV. If I pick up the console with X, oops back up look at the console with x that wire is just here uh th this is whatever if you're around back then to me this was like how people had their nintendo set up it's, for some reason it was usually like on top of the tv or in an entertainment center so we're going to drop that with x cool 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 let's grab the cartridge with x put it here so i can see what i'm doing I'll fall over. I'm going to press C to open this up. Having the cartridge again, we're going over. It's going to highlight this. It's going to rotate it for you. So I believe I'm going to press is it X to put it back in. So now the cartridge is in there. If I want to pull it back out, I press X again. X one more time, pop it in there. Get the cartridge. Press C. So this is hooked up. This is hooked up. Now all I have to do is press the space bar. Console is coming on. Boom, we got Contra. If you want to control the game, I'm pressing the arrow keys. As you can see, it's just moving the volume. What you're going to do is you're going to look at the TV, press spacebar. You are now locked to the TV. You cannot do anything. You can look around. You're stuck here playing Contra forever. If you want to disengage from the TV, what you do is hold control, press spacebar. The TV's white. I can move around again. If I want to, I can come up here game off. Oops. No. Or I, you know, rage quit. All right, so we're going to close this. Spacebar. Lock myself to the TV. I'm using an Xbox controller. This gets set up automatically. Um, 30 lives code. Not. Um, from here, I can just play Contra if I want to. Um, we're going to switch to another console in just a moment. Yep. One of the cool things about the simulator to me is the way they simulate the scratches, or whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to hit control and space bar so I can move around. Uh, maybe I don't want to be here. Maybe maybe I want to be over here in my bed. 
Probably way too far away. I think that is too far away. Uh, yeah, you should be a good distance from the TV, right? That's what your parents used to tell you. Back here. This is this is like extra hard mode because I'm playing on a TV in VR and the TV's like far distance too. All right. Control space. We'll go ahead and cut this off. Go. Turn the TV off. I don't want to waste that power. Grab this. Bring this back over here with X. Drop it. Grab this game, right over here. That in, C, space, bam. Actually, control space, I want to drop my height down a little bit. Space, okay, cool. Let's go. I'm not going to cover the more complicated consoles on here. I'm going, it's mostly, I've got like Nintendo, NES, Super Nintendo, uh, 2600. PlayStation and Dreamcast and Saturn, if that's your thing, they require a bit more effort in the BIOS file. Um, I'll cover that in another video, same with customization. But anyway, as you can see, this is all working okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. That means these are good. So from there, since I've got more ROMs, I'm gonna go in here, let's go to, go to N64. Make a folder here, my games folder, N64, downloaded a couple of games, we will, of course, because you know this just came out on Switch, like this over here, it's Goldeneye and Mario 64, drag that over there, so I've just added more games, and as I mentioned, whenever you add games to this, you need to go to your game scanner, run this again, it's going to open this up. Don't have to do that. I can just go in here and add the N64. It's going to try to autocomplete, um, suggesting parallels. So we will save changes, download missing core, and then we're going to scan games. Got uh, two new games, four games total. Back out of here. Back up to MEVR. We'll go to Ford's desktop again. Okay. Oh, it spawned both consoles. You know what, let's do something, let's try something else. Um, not that. So if you ever wanna get rid of something that's in your room, as you can see, I've got the, the tab menu open. There's a little trash can that's in the corner. So I can grab this, put this in the trash, it's gone. This frees up space in your room if stuff gets too cluttered or whatever. Like for me, what I usually do is I will start a room like this and get rid of all of the extra TVs. I might have like two or three maybe at the most. Uh, we'll get the N64. Why not? Let's do this the exact same way, because I think I did go to a kid's house who had this set up like this too, which felt weird. I'll drop that. I'm going to hook this up to the TV. Need that wire to not be all up in my way. Dang it. Oh, man. Whatever. This is this is good. Good enough for me. Okay, so we're gonna hit tab. We're gonna spawn. If you look over here, it's got the N64. I've got the two games. Uh, I got Mario 64 and Goldeneye. So let's go with Mario. Pop this up here. Um, let's go back to the menu. Copy a Goldeneye up here too. Cool. I'm gonna put this in. Pop that in. Same thing. Spacebar to turn it on. Again, spacebar to lock to the TV. Goldeneye coming on. Bam. We're in Goldeneye. I know I downloaded the ROM of this the other day. And it was, I think it was, I feel like it was a Japanese or it was something that was weird. I was like, I didn't expect this at all. What I wanted. Um. I'm gonna turn, hit control and space to move myself from here. Let's see, we can go over here and click the clock to change the time of day. It's fine. Like there's just whatever, it's just weird. We're good. All right. Cool. As you can see, Goldeneye works too. Okay. 
go ahead and close this too. Um, last thing to do, let's go with one more console. So we'll go with GameCube. GameCube, I um, extracted the games already. Oops. GameCube, thank you. These are from my actual ROMs I have on the computer, like already. I didn't feel like downloading even more stuff, so we'll go with... Not, let's do these two. Three. Go with these three. These are tiny. We're going to drag these folders over to the GameCube folder. That's gone. Whatever. Uh, the games are already extracted, so I don't have to worry about that too much. Um, game scanner. Game scanner. Coming up, we're going to add another folder. We're going to add the GameCube folder here. I think there's only Dolphin. Um, save changes. Alan missing cores. It's got the Dolphin core downloaded. Scan games. Three new games detected. As you can see, this thing tried to do a recursive folder scan, which means that it went into this folder here, and it went in there, and it's like, oh, there's a file in here too, so that's useful. Um, all right, so this is all good. Back out of there, we'll go to Force Desktop one more time. Let's show this is also working too. This, I somehow I forgot about this. We'll just keep this one easier, so I'll just move this over to here. On top of the TV again. In VR, for me as a short person, this is actually a bit of a. We'll hit C. Um, go here. GameCube. We'll go with. This is what you want to see. This is what I want to do. And this is the underdog. But I play this all the time, so it's like these are the two. I usually go with this, so I'll go with Smash. I'll, you know, we'll do that. Grab Smash. That. Close that menu. Okay, so we've got this. I'm picking this up. I'm going over to the console, pressing X, pressing C to close it. I connect this to the TV with F. That's connected. We'll just hit space, turn this on, and pull wire in front of the TV, like savage. We're good. You don't have to worry about getting ISO files for GameCube games, or not ISO files, um, BIOS files. It's just the ROMs. As I mentioned, you can find these games online. You need to look for them yourself. Can't tell you. Files, files. You can check YouTube. You can check Reddit. Check Google, whatever you need to do. Um, game should run fine, too. Let's go with four. Hold you. We're just starting. Starting. Don't judge me. I do not play Smash. At all. But uh, yeah, anyway, as you can see, the game is running fine too. I'm using an Xbox controller, as I mentioned, so. Yep. Anyway, so that's setting up MEVR. This is what it looks like when it's all good to go. Um, I'll cover customization, maybe the BIOS files another day. I'm not going to show you where to get the BIOS files from. I can show you where to get images from at another point. But anyway. Look at this. That's that's my mood right now. See you later and peace.